the politics of Medicare. Paul Ryan uses the M word on the trail for the first time, with the stakes growing higher in the race for president. Instead of running from the Democrats' attacks, Team Romney flips the script and launches a counteroffensive, with VP candidate Paul Ryan now predicting that Republicans will win the Medicare debate. He spoke again just moments ago in Ohio, accusing the president of robbing Medicare to pay for his health care law. President Obama's campaign calls this an achievement. You think raiding Medicare to pay for Obamacare is an achievement? Neither do I. The Obama campaign firing back this morning, calling the accusations blatantly false. Here is Obama senior advisor David Axelrod this morning from Morning Joe. The fact of the matter is what Romney is proposing now is to roll all that back, which would mean that Medicare would reach uh, insolvency uh, eight years earlier, and seniors would lose benefits, would lose prescription drug coverage, would lose preventive uh, care coverage. That's the Romney plan right now. Okay, so while this war of words continues over Medicare, discussion of the economy appears to be taking a back seat, perhaps to the president's benefit. A new Gallup poll shows that 60 percent of voters disapprove of the president's handling of the economy. All right, let's dive in and bring in our political power panel today. Matt Cooper, White House managing editor for the National Journal. We also have former Ohio governor, Democrat Ted Strickland, and Republican strategist Sophia Nelson. So the president hit back yesterday, hitting back pretty hard, accusing Team Romney of being dishonest about what he plans to do uh, for Medicare through the Affordable Care Act. Take a listen to this. They want to turn Medicare into a voucher program. My plans already extended Medicare by nearly a decade. Their plan ends Medicare as we know it. My plan reduces the cost of Medicare by cracking down on fraud and waste and subsidies to insurance companies. Their plan makes seniors pay more so they can give another tax cut to millionaires and billionaires. Sophia, I want to start with you because Romney claims that he's going to restore the Medicare cuts made under the president's health care law. But, but how does Mitt Romney benefit by shortening the life of Medicare, rolling back the savings that seniors are already benefiting from now? Well, I think, Thomas, one, I want to make a point of correction. I'm not a Republican strategist. Not sure where that lead ins there. I'm a Griot contributor. But oh, forgive I think me, on forgive the, me. Uh, no, no, not your fault. I think on the Romney front, though, I think this is a matter of who the public's going to believe. Are they going to believe what Governor Romney's saying that, you know, the president has raided Medicare? to put money into Obamacare, or are they going to believe what the Democrats are saying, that, you know, Governor Romney is going to take the money and give it away for tax cuts for the wealthy? And so I think that the question about, you know, what Governor Romney's doing here exactly and why they're going on the offensive, I think it's the competing messages of who we believe. To be honest, both of them are, are kind of fudging, I think, a little bit on what they've really done with the $700 billion. So, Governor Strickland, this Medicare offensive is new for Republicans. Usually it's a Democratic talking point where uh, the, the Democrats come out firing on this to put the Republicans on their heels. Do you think that the left has been caught off guard? Well, I think when we're talking about Medicare, it's going to help the president. It's going to help the Democrats. I mean, the people in this country know which party uh, and which leaders uh, of our political parties support Medicare. Um, uh, Paul Ryan had a plan. Uh, Mitt Romney's got a plan. They do want to make Medicare a voucher system uh, to destroy Medicare as we know it. The American people don't want that to happen. The polling's very clear on that issue. And so I think this is a real winner for the president and for the entire Democratic Party as our, as our uh, candidates for Senate and Congress across the country are now starting to talk about the Republican plan to destroy Medicare as we know it. Matt, so Romney has said all along that the economy is going to be the, the front and center topic of this campaign. Is he letting Democratic attacks on Medicare throw him off message? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think he still emphasizes uh, the problems with the economy and the high unemployment under President Obama all the time. But I think this, uh, this question of the cuts has given him something to throw back at the president, even though, you know, uh, Congressman Ryan's own plan includes those cuts. All right, so the, a lot of people look at this and the, the write-ups that we're seeing out there, uh, people talking about the nasty turn that we're seeing August take. Politico notes that Mitt Romney is uh, now getting a lot more personal when it comes to talking about President Obama writing. Romney spent nearly a year talking about how Obama is a nice guy who just doesn't understand how the economy works because he has no private sector experiment, experience. But as the campaign grew more intense and the attacks more personal, Romney dropped the idea that he has any admiration for Obama. 
in its place is a description of Obama as a purveyor of a campaign not worthy of the office. The president now has responded to this, and Governor, I want to ask you this, you know, has responded to Romney's claims that he's running a campaign of hate and anger. And Governor, I want to show you this clip because he sat down with Entertainment Tonight and Nancy O'Dell. Take a look. Romney just accused you of running a campaign of hate and anger. How do you react to that? How do you respond to that? Well, Nancy, you've been on the campaign trail with me for a day and a half, and this is pretty typical of uh, what we do. We're going around the country talking about how do we put people back to work, how do we improve our schools, how do we make sure that uh, we're producing American energy, you know, how do we uh, lower our debt in a responsible way. And I don't think you or anybody who, who's been watching me campaign would suggest that uh, in any way, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, tried to divide the country. We've always tried to bring the country together. All right. So, Governor, this was all launched after Joe Biden talked about the fact that the uh, Romney ticket wants to unchain Wall Street. Romney then fires back at the use of the term chains, then says the president uh, is angry and almost unhinged. And now we have the president and the first lady sitting down with Nancy O'Dell over at ET and the Insider. Great for them uh, to get a scoop like that. But is she the right journalist to take the president on whether or not he has a campaign of hate? Well, to, to accuse the president of having a campaign of hate, I think, is just showing that Mr. Romney is reaching a desperation point. I've been with this president on the campaign trail here in Ohio. I can tell you he is relaxed. He's confident. He's talking about the issues. And I don't think there's a hateful bone in this president's body. Uh, and for Mitt Romney to make that accusation, I think, is just saying something about the condition of the Mitt Romney campaign since he has chosen um, uh, Paul Ryan as his running mate. It's not working. It's not going to work in Ohio. Uh, and, and, and I think we're seeing that reflected in Mr. Romney's change of uh, approach here. Uh, Sophia, we, we also understand that the president told People Magazine, quote, the truth is that during the course of the campaigns, folks like this get obsessed with how something was phrased, even if everybody personally understands that's not how it was meant. And it's not only the Romney campaign. Uh, let's take a look at this new ad that's out today from the RNC. We'll talk about it on the other side. In one week, you can put an end to the politics that would divide a nation just to win an election. It's fear this time. 2012, it's fear of the alternative. You're going to put you all back in chains. Back in chains. Fear of the alternative. It is a Trojan horse. This plan would literally be a death trap for some An seniors. Attempt to impose a radical vision on our country. It passes like a tornado through America's nursing homes. All right, you got to give it to the RNC, Sophia. They were quick to get this out. The, the right obviously going after the president, though, for his high favorability rating. Uh, but does the president m make it an easy target to uh, try to align him as this celebrity president again if he's sitting down with E.T., giving quotes to People magazine? I mean, these are infotainment style news sources. Two, two points. First of all, I, I totally agree that this president does not have an angry, hateful bone in his body. That's not the man that I've covered, that we've all covered. He's not an angry guy in any way. But I do think that it's legitimate for the President Thomas to talk to People Magazine, Entertainment, whatever, because those are magazines that mainstream, you know, the center of America reads. They appeal to generational blocks of people, mostly younger, sometimes moms. And the female vote is going to be critical in this election, as you know, to both sides. And the President's winning the gender gap. So that doesn't surprise me. But I do think that the Romney campaign, to their credit, whether you agree with them or not, are fighting back in a way you probably don't see Republicans typically do. And I think Paul Ryan, who's been a friend of mine for over 20 years, I think he's someone that is energized Governor Romney to get a little bit aggressive in the sense of, hey, you know, we're going to argue with you about Medicare. We're going to argue with you about uh, issues of character. If you're going to attack me on Bain and say I'm not uh, being forthcoming with my taxes, whatever. I think the Republicans are signaling they're willing to mix it up. And I think it's August, and I think these are the dog days, last days of summer, and this right. is what happens in politics. It's just what they do. Matt, real quickly, though, as Sophia said that Ryan has energized maybe the campaign, uh, really hasn't energized the people that are drawing eyes to the campaign. As we take a look at this new poll that's been put out, uh, a new Gallup poll showing that Romney has not immediately benefited from putting Ryan on the ticket. Do you think that that's going to change, especially as we heat up between between uh, people getting excited for Joe Biden and Paul Ryan at the debate. 
Uh, look, I think polls are going to go up and down uh, all fall and through the end of summer. Uh, the big thing is I think the basic battle lines have been drawn about, uh, you know, Romney hitting Obama on the economy and Obama hitting Romney and Ryan on uh, Medicare cuts. It'll be interesting. As you, as you say, we're in the, the doldrums of August, but it's going to heat up really soon as we uh, race through the rest of this summer. Our Thursday power panel, Sophia Nelson, contributor to thegrio.com, Governor Ted Strickland, and Matt Cooper of the National Journal. My thanks to all three of you.